And number three is the sound system. Now this is the titanium version. It's the entry level and compared to its Japanese rivals, to its Korean rivals, the speakers are far superior in this. So you just turn it up and we go for a drive. and welcome back to the Dundeal YouTube channel. Today, we're reviewing the Ford Cougar. Now, the first thing to take note of is that in true Irish form, it's lashing rain, so there's not gonna be very many cool drone shots in this video. The second thing to take note of is that this particular Cougar, the second generation, is going out of production, and in mid-2020, we're getting a brand new one, and we'll talk more on that, as I think it could be a very good seller. However, it leaves this to be a great car if you're looking for a lot of bang for your buck, particularly if you're looking for, let's say, an X demonstration model. So, they come in three specs, starting with the Titanium, which is this this one then there's the ST line which is probably the one to go for and then if you're really willing to fork out the money you can get the Vignale now prices for this start at 28,850 plus delivery charges which are about a thousand euros then the ST line is slightly over 30k let's take a look at it as the entry model does have quite a lot on offer and it's a great car so let's see a little bit more the Ford Kuga rivals cars like the Nissan Qashqai, which we've previously reviewed. But at a first glance, it does appear a little bit smaller. And in fact, it is that little bit smaller. So when you open up the boot, it is only 456 litres. Now that is plenty, but it's not as much as some of its rivals like the Renault Qajar. It's actually quite a functional boot. So you have a parcel tray here, which works nice and easily, although there's nowhere to store it should you take it out. There's a spare wheel here, it's a space saver. Not the best spare wheel, but it's better than no spare wheel, and we know a lot of the rivals don't even offer one. There's storage around here, there's some shopping hooks there. Now, the only way I could criticize it is the seats do fold in a 60-40 split, but there's nowhere to do it from here, and in fact, you actually have to walk the whole way around here and use this lever right here. Like many of its rivals, the Oshfix points are very accessible. In fact, they're probably more accessible in this car than any other competitor. The other thing is stepping into it is quite nice. You definitely feel that it's an SUV and you feel like you're a little bit higher up. Now the only drawback is for such a tall car, there's enough headroom for me, but I'm quite short. Don't like to admit it, but it is the truth. In terms of knee space, you have quite a lot. You've storage here. You have a 12 volt socket, some heaters, You've got an armrest with some cup holders, and actually these seats are fully reclinable. Now they're fully reclined right now, but should you want a slightly more comfortable position, if you want to have better posture, you can move around, which it's a nice little feature. Now, at the helm of the Ford Kuga, the first thing you notice when you sit in is it's very comfortable. It's very supportive of the seat, and it's really maneuverable. And what's more is the steering wheel is actually one of the most maneuverable steering wheels I've ever come across. In terms of storage, we've got big door bins here which can store a drink or anything else. You've got two more drink holders in here, somewhere to store your phone. And in here, under the armrest, you have a small little section and then it actually is quite deep with two USB points. And what I really like is you can have your phone charger come out there and it doesn't catch. Then you just connect it up to the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and the whole system comes up here on the infotainment system. We'll talk a bit more about that. In general, I would say the feel of the car is maybe a little bit dated. Things like this sunglasses holder here, it just looks a little bit old fashioned. Um, now the glove box, very, very spacious, very big, very Ford-esque. And I think that's the thing about Fords, they're very practical and they kind of are what they say they are on the tin, if that makes sense. Now, let's talk about the infotainment system. Now, the infotainment system is a little bit far away and some of the buttons can be a little bit tough to work. It has an inbuilt sat nav, but the reality is it is completely compatible with Android devices and Apple devices. So when you plug it in, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto will start up and then you're laughing because all your apps are here and they're absolutely fantastic. Your Google Maps is tough to beat. And I think any car with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay has the perfect infotainment system. There is quite a lot of buttons on the Cougar, which I'm a big fan of. Things like a volume knob, it's, it's tough to beat that. However, in a lot of more modern cars, we tend to be going towards the touchscreen. And although this screen is 
of course touchscreen some of them completely exclude any buttons now the new cougar that's coming out next year is going to have the similar kind of ford focus infotainment system which if you've seen our review on that is absolutely fantastic So to drive the Cougar, the first thing I want to show you is the wipers because they go like this, which I think is quite a nice touch. Now when you actually drive the car, everything feels a little bit more old fashioned but in a positive manner. So the indicators, for example, they click into place really nicely. The gear changes are really smooth and you feel very connected to the car. And I think the feeling of driving is so important. What's more is everything is within reach. So the steering wheel is in a very nice position. I'm sitting with my legs down towards the pedals, the gear sticks right here. The only thing I'd say is some of the climate control can be a little bit of a stretch, but that is slim pickings. The most popular engines are going to be this 1.5 diesel with 120 brake horsepower or the 2 litre diesel with 150 brake horsepower. Now, I know there's a bit of scepticism in the market about diesel, but in 2019, almost 46% of new cars sold were still diesel, so it's still probably the most popular choice by consumers. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is the gearbox. Now, it's a big talk, do you go automatic, do you go manual? This manual gearbox is fantastic, as I previously mentioned. However, it's one of those things where I think, now there's no factual evidence behind this, but I personally believe that automatic gearboxes will hold their value better in the time to come. And it is an expensive extra to add. I think it costs about 4,000 to get an automatic gearbox in a Cougar, but it could well be worth doing, particularly when it comes to resale value. So this Cougar is a front wheel drive car, which makes it very, very kind of predictable. You can get a four wheel drive one, however, it's not worth it because the reality is if you do need an off-road car, you'll probably be going for something a little bit bigger. Now, in terms of driving, it's a lot sportier than most of its competitors. It definitely feels that way, and this isn't even the ST line. However, it's still reasonably comfortable when you're driving around town as we go past the roundabout here. There's still a little bit of roll. The suspension's soft when you do go over bumps like this. And all in all, it's quite a nice place to drive. Lastly, when you're parking, there's great visibility. There's not many blind spots. The mirrors are really nice and large. And what's more is every car comes with reversing parking sensors as standard. So I know, oh, there we go. We're in the spot, electric handbrake on, engine off, which is just a button and off we go. The next segment of every review is we talk about three of our favorite and least favorite things of each car. So in the Cougar, number one on my least favorite things is the actual lip here when you fall down to increase the boot size. Now it's only small, but it would be very nice if it went completely flat as then it would be extremely practical. Now another thing that I'm not a massive fan of is these Isofix points. Now they are extremely accessible as I said before, but compared to an Ateca where they're hidden away and you don't really notice them, these appear a little bit raw and kind of unfinished. And number three is that I find the Cougar doesn't really belong in the class it sits in. It rivals things like the Qashqai, the Qajar, the Ateca, but it seems just a little bit smaller to them when you actually see it in the flesh. It's not quite as large and it doesn't really sit in the mid-size SUV range. But I do kind of think it's probably one of the best looking. So number one on my likes is actually the heater or the demister or whatever you want to call it. So as you can see right now, we've got a little bit of fog. Now when I turn it on and turn it to high, it is extremely powerful and it actually clears the fog in a matter of seconds, which is very impressive. And I have to say, it's really nice to have that. Number two is the fact that the hump in the floor in the middle is actually not very big. It's actually really, really small. So if you have a third passenger in the back, they're not really gonna suffer from kind of losing leg space, which is quite nice. And number three is the sound system. Now this is the titanium version. It's the entry level and compared to its Japanese rivals, to its Korean rivals, the speakers are far superior in this. So you just turn it up and you go for a drive.
And there you have it, that is Done Deal's review of the Ford Cougar. Now remember, in mid 2020, there will be the third generation Cougar, and that one could be a market disruptor. It's coming out with a 2.5 liter hybrid engine. It's only gonna be a little bit more expensive than the 1.5 diesel, and it definitely could mix things up a little bit in the midsize SUV market. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Comment if you've ever driven a Cougar or if you've any experience or even any of its competitors and make sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.